their entire history been 8-0. Kirk Ferentz taking his team on the banks of the old Red Cedar to take on Michigan State. Kirk Cousins, Brian Lithicum, all a little trickeration. Hook and lateral, shade to the Boise State play. Lithicum to Blair White. White runs it beautifully, Lou. Just very well executed. They needed a big play. It was right near the end of the game. They were down. Under two minutes to go. Sparty down by three. Cousins firing the Blair White project. Touchdown, Cousins 16-32, 225, and Iowa look to be sunk. Third and eight, under a minute to go. Ricky Stanji, Trey Strauss, 21 yards, first down, and now they're getting deep in the green and white territory. Stanji to Daryl Johnson, Koulianos. A terrific job by Stanji, hanging into the pocket, under pressure right here, delivering the ball for the first down. Now a first and goal. From the first and 10 from the 15, Stanzi up top. Chris Rucker interception, game over. There was a flag on the play. They call defensive holding, and I was still alive. Ball now on the seven. Stanzi. <laughs> Rucker breaks it up, intended for Moyaki. Second down. Stanzi to nobody. Third down, five ticks to go. Got to get rid of it quickly on the slant. No good, Ferentz. The picture of calm and composure. And on fourth down with two seconds left, Stanji to Marvin McNutt, and Iowa gets it done. What happened is they gave away the inside. Crimson Tide. Nick Saban said he felt like his team was tired psychologically. Daniel Lincoln, his leg might be a little bit tired. Lincoln's coming back from an injury. He says his range isn't all the way back, and he wasn't quite strong enough on a 47-yard attempt at the end of the first half. Oh, it was so close. Four kick to any one of them goes the other way. Tennessee celebrating. In the fourth quarter, still 9-3, 43 yards out. Big Terrence Cody coming through, man. Just barreling through. Terrific play by Mount Cody. Splitting a couple of offensive linemen, oh, pushing them out of the way and knocking it down. Ian Marcel Darius getting great push up front. In the fourth, Alabama going to salt it away now, up 12-3. Mark Ingram, the Heisman Trophy candidate, never in his career has lost a fumble. Until now. 322 touches in Tennessee. Dennis Rogan, Eric Berry getting it out of there. Great job by the Vols to give them one more chance. The ensuing Tennessee drive, Jonathan Crompton played very well against this Alabama defense. Threw for 265 yards, and with under 90 seconds to go, finds Gerald Jones. Give him six. Volunteers in it. 12 10, but they've got to get the onside kick. Alabama's got the hands team, except the hands team can't handle it. And the Vols have it back with a chance to break their arch rival's heart. Auburn might be Alabama's biggest rival, but Alabama is Tennessee's biggest one. And they would love nothing better than to spoil the Tide's championship dreams. Propped into Stocker, 23 yards. Great catch. A oh, tremendous catch. Critical time. The momentum's going all the way towards Tennessee. Here comes the clock. Tick, 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 tick. But no timeouts. Afraid of a sack? Afraid of a pick? Going to keep it on the ground, Mayday. Absolutely. You run the ball to the left. Just make sure it's in the middle of the field to give you an opportunity to win the game. From 44 yards out, Daniel Lincoln, one for three on the day. Crompton can't watch, but Terrence Cody can because the big fella's there in the middle. Mount Cody splitting those linemen again. Look at him with glee. But it's a great job of staying low right here, getting penetration, and getting those big balls up in the air. And Alabama, not a pretty victory. But one that works, 12-10, Lane Kiffin after the game. Their business, too. They were in Starkville. The Dan Mullins team ready to stand up against uh, his old boss's crew. Tim Tebow, high snap, and then he ties Herschel. Oh, Tebow with the stiff arm, but Herschel did his in three years, right? <laughs> 49 career rushing touchdowns. Only the great Herschel Walker has had that many as Tebow goes in. And Florida has a 13-3 lead. Now, just before the half, Tebow... Picked off by Jonathan Banks. Oh, you don't expect this to happen. It's right before the half. You're going to score. We got three of the ball. Oh, my goodness gracious. They go 99 yards the other way. You know, Tebow threw two pick sixes on the night. He didn't only throw him one in his whole career. Oh, Urban. And now, well, see, Coach, what I did was <laughs> and just before halftime. Well, they're somebody, disgusting this there. But they, somebody said something about somebody's mama, uh -oh. I think. 16 13, Chris Rainey goes in. Rainey had 90 yards rushing. Gators missed the extra point, but they were in control. So it seemed Dustin Doe would get the deflection, and Mark, it's a pick six, except it shouldn't have been. That's correct, and can the SEC officials get it right? It's oh. been a few weeks, and not only get it right, they can't even get it right on replay. Ball is out. Receiving that shot, Doe. Uh, Urban may still have a little something to say to him about securing that football. He got a
never lose after the Red River rivalry. Max never lost. 11 and 0 against Missouri. Uh, they find Jordan Shipley early. Take another look here. Watch the safety Kenji Jackson. What happens? Lee? Well, he just did right here. He gets caught up inside. Good blocking. Shipley puts Texas up 7 0, and McCoy was razor sharp again, Mark. Find Shipley. You know, when, when you're roommates with somebody, you kind of talk about plays you're going to design, and if the defense comes up, you're going to pitch him the ball, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, defensive coordinator Dave Steckel wasn't really pleased. Texas yet another non offensive touchdown. They lead the world in that category. I tell you, this Texas team, hey, defense is a little underrated. Offense looked great. They blow out Missouri on the road 41 to 7. It's ranking for of any kind. Boise State, number four in the BCS. Here's Kellen Moore to Tyler Shoemaker. Moore, savvy lefty, number one in the nation in passing efficiency, and Broncos were off and running in the islands. Greg Salas, second in the nation, averaging nearly 132 yards per game receiving, trying to get some extra yardage, but he's stripped. Brandon Thompson comes up with it for the Broncos. And from there, Moore would go up top to Austin Pettis. Pettis has scored a touchdown in every game this season. Coach Pete's team was rolling. It really had a wise number the last few years. Moore would continue to do so. Well, pump fake, the back foot to Titus Young. Touchdown. The Warriors will lose five straight for the first time since 1998 when they went 0-12, and, and the Broncos continue to roll off. Last three meetings, including last year in Corvallis, when they knocked the Trojans out of the championship game. Matt Barkley up top to Ronald Johnson. A terrific throw by Matt Barkley, but a better catch by Ronald Johnson. Look at the concentration laying out for the football here. Touchdown, USC. Barkley, 15 and 25, threw a couple of touchdown passes. Great to see Stephon Johnson. His first game since having the accident in the weight room, pumping up the crowd. Oregon State, boy, they play tough. Sean Canfield, Canfield and Damala Adeniji. USC's lead is cut to five. Alan Bradford went for a buck 47 tonight, Luke. I'll tell you, this was just a great offensive display by both teams. The usually great South, uh, Southern Cal defense did not show up. 36 points for the Beavers, but SC thoroughly dominated the series. It won the last four. Average score had been 42. Actually, last five. Average score had been 42 to 17. And they got things started with special teams. Tyrell Irvin recovering the block punt in the end zone. Oregon had a two-point conversion to make it 8-3. And Jake Locker, it's fourth down, Mark. I know, but here's the uh, two-point conversion play. So Oregon does this. They count guys and see if they think they have a numbers advantage, and they take the two instead of the one if they can. And field goal attempt. Nate Costa picked it up and ran with it, kept the drive alive for Oregon in the early going. Then... Well, Michael James gets loose down the sideline. What about the job Chip Kelly has done coaching this team? I told you guys he was going to be a great coach after that loss to Boise. They've done an outstanding <laughs> job. For three and three, two and two in conference, the picture of mediocrity, or so it would seem, but not for C.J. Spiller, who, who breaks speed limits in the school zone when he starts returning kickoffs. Look at that, high and tight with that football coach. Look at the speed going down the sidelines. How many safeties did they have for Miami? <laughs> they only had one, but they had four when they helped him with that type of speed. There's a sixth career kickoff return for a touchdown. Third this year, wheel route. There's Spiller. I, I would go with 28 all the time. He has seven touchdowns from 50 yards or longer this year. That's the second one of the game, and Clemson has the lead again. 21-17, back and forth we go. Kyle Parker, Allen Bailey, Marcus Robinson scoop and score. Uh, just a bad decision there by Kyle Parker. Sometimes you just take trying to scramble, going back, and he doesn't give great effort, but not fast enough. Miami looks like they're going to be in control. 24-21 deep in the third. Parker has a wide open Andre Ellington. Oh, couldn't connect. Dabo can't believe it. So how did he get so open? Look at this, Luke. Well, what happened? They don't see, see him on the sideline, and they don't see him. Now, you ha there's a rule. You have to be within 10 yards of the huddle before you can go take your position. You can't just, like, run out of bounds and step back in. 27-24, Miami had the lead. Ja'Cory Harris picked off by DeAndre McDaniel. McDaniel's second pick of the game. Harris threw three of them. McDaniel's got seven interceptions this year. Next possession, DeCorey undaunted up top, Travis Benjamin. He throws such a pretty deep ball. And the speed of Travis Benjamin, they're not going to catch him. Huge play for the Hurricanes. Hurricanes back on top, 34-31. Now under a minute to go, fourth and one. Clemson has to get it to survive. And Jamie Harper, power back, gets it done. And Harper running it again and pulling tacklers with him. Just short of the first down marker. Swinney 
Chips wanting to make sure we watch the clock here. Going to have to clock the ball, get it stopped. To run down at the right time, go find the official. Let's call timeout. Clemson now going to try to tie the game, send it to overtime. Richard Jackson, toe meets leather, high enough, long enough. Overtime we go. In the free football time, Canes had to kick a field goal. But in the first two plays, Clemson went backwards a yard. And here's Parker. That is a frozen laser beam. Jacoby Ford, ball game. Parker threw for 326 yards and three scores. Lost to the Hurricanes this year, but it was the Cavaliers with no losses in conference play. Welcoming in Tech, who hadn't won in Charlottesville since 1990. Josh Nesbitt pitched to Anthony Allen. He's hit by Razai Dowling, but he just keeps breaking tackles. Well, he just keeps going. Great determination. You cannot bottle up that Georgia Tech offense the entire game. Watch uh, Jonathan Dwyer hit the truck stick on Chris Cook. Oh, just run oh. right through the defender. Oh. oh, what a great run by Dwyer. That's a powerful one. Determination. Yeah, but they're there to stop passes. Not oh, come on, Coach. He lowers the boom back. right there. He was, he was the hammer. The defender was the nail. That, that's what you always told your defensive backs <laughs> when you were a secondary coach. Oh, yeah. Just stop the pass. Oh, you know what? Pitch relationship something Johnson talked about this week, and I would say Nesbitt now and had a pretty good one. We are all Huskies. Mourning the death in Morgantown for Jasper Howard. Here is the reaction in Morgantown. Players on both sides wearing things to remember Jasper Howard, who is number six. His jersey and his helmet making the trip from stores. His family saying, of course, they wanted the team to play on. Edsel said he thought his team would play his heart out, and they did, but the opening kickoff of the game went to West Virginia's Tavon Austin. Uh, just very well executed, very well blocked, but only one safety by Connecticut. 98 yards. Mountaineers out to a 7-0 lead. 27 seconds left in the half. Cody Endress, Kashif Moore, and the Huskies, the Huskies who had lost all five meetings to West Virginia by a combined score of 214 to 77, had the lead. Noel Devine has been sensational, Mark. And a terrific job of reversing direction here and getting to the sideline. Noel Devine picks up a huge 63-yard gain for West Virginia. Devine sixth in the country in rushing, averaging over 122 yards per game, and he did better than that in this one. 21-17, Endress right down the gut into traffic, picked off by Kent Richardson. Turns it all the way to the red zone, but oh, football on the inside. It means that traffic can get to it. The Huskies have it back. Huge, huge break for UConn. A mere three plays later on third and eight. Edsel's team backed up. Endress, Marcus Easley, house me. Oh, just a great throw over inside. And this is an individual who hadn't played a great deal, but the last two games he's come on strong. He shows what great speed he has and takes it all the way. 88 yards for the touchdown. Go ahead. Over 150 yards receiving, but Devine was not finished. And Noel, Devine, a surname, also an adjective. Tiptoe, touchdown, 178 yards for number seven. Ensuing drive, UConn back in West Virginia territory, but Endress is nailed as he throws. Chris Neal with the interception, and UConn comes up just a little short, 28-24, Randy Edsel after the game. 32-7 last year, but this time the game was in Provo and BYU, so they weren't thinking about revenge. Probably a good thing because they didn't come close to getting it. Jeremy Curley. Noted for his running, pretty good arm. But the throw from Curly Lou to Bart Johnson. Tremendous throw, but what was so obvious was the speed of TCU versus BYU. Particularly on defense, and Andy Dalton was outstanding, Mark. Oh, what a terrific pass to the back of the end zone to Jimmy Young. Jimmy Young makes an outstanding catch. Another score for TCU. Dalton, 13 to 24, three touchdowns, no picks here. This one's going to go 75 to Antoine Hicks. And for the second time this year, BYU destroyed at home by a team of speed. First, it was Florida State. Tony Pike just busied himself taking his Spanish class this week. They say he had a little surgery on his forearm. Watch Zach Calaris come out and just show off. Calaris to Armand Benz. He can't throw. He's a runner. I saw him last week. He ran for hundreds of yards last week. But boy, he showed an arm this week. Isaiah Pede, Mayday. You know, it doesn't matter 
who they put at quarterback at Cincinnati. They it really does it, does it. Form well, just insert quarterback, win a game. And you know what? If you want to call that a system quarterback, well, that's a pretty good system to have. They had five quarterbacks last year and won the Big East. Glaris, oh, I didn't have to bench him. He threw two incomplete passes. See how it plays out. Notre Dame and Boston College, there was no vote taken. Charlie knew that he had a six-game losing streak to BC. Jimmy Clausen to Golden Tate. Notre Dame takes the lead. Under five minutes to go, Dave Shinsky, the former baseball player, actually threw for about 30-plus more yards than Clausen did on the day. It also was picked off as he threw it into traffic by Kyle McCarthy. McCarthy's second pick of the day. Boston College in another shot, fourth and 17. Shinsky to Gunnell. Well, Boston College had five turnovers to Notre Dame zero, and you cannot turn the ball over five times and expect to win. Gunnell had 10 catches, 179 yards, and here is the last of those five turnovers. Shinsky picked off by Brian Smith, and the streak is over. Notre Dame wins it 20 to 16. Sixth straight game the Irish have played this season, decided by seven points or less. Crown taking on Auburn. Matt Hatter had a week off to put some ball plays under his hat, and he found some passing plays for Jordan Jefferson and Terrence Tolliver. A terrific job by Jordan Jefferson, putting the ball exactly where that wide receiver can get it. Nice play for the offense. Boy, the wheels have come off the Auburn offense. Chris Todd, 8 of 14 for 47 yards, and a great interception by Chris Hawkins. But he had all kind of time, too. Boy, what a great catch there. And he's on defense. Can you imagine how good those receivers are? Where's Brandon LaFell? LSU gave the ball to Russell Shepard, the freshman, who Leslie said, we'll see if we can get him greased up and call his plays and see if we can have him ready for the game. He's a strong football player. Just like that. <laughs> Joe Paterno hadn't won in the big house since 1996, but boy, that was going to come to an end. David Moosman taps the ball, take Forcia out of the end zone for a safety. And they tried to explain it to Rich Rodriguez, and I'm sure Rich didn't want to hear it. Daryl Clark to Andrew Corliss. Uh, Clark had just a tremendous day here as he makes a great throw. Matter of fact, this is the best Penn State's offense has looked this entire year. Found Graham Zug a couple times, made a terrific job of the offensive line protecting Clark. He drops it right in here for another touchdown pass for Penn State. Clark 230 yards through the air and four touchdown tosses as Penn State. A lot of criticism coming his way after the loss to Purdue, but he finds Devere Posey open. And, you know, coverage is really acceptable here for Minnesota if you'd like to cover a wide receiver running free down the sideline. A couple of guys jumped the short route, left the long guy open. Zone read, stiff arm. Pryor had 239 yards passing, over 100 rushing, and finds the freshman Posey again. Boy, this is just a great throw. He sets his feet. He shows the strength of his arm. And Posey is really going to be a special receiver. 38-7 to seven by five points this season. No Sam Bradford, hurt shoulder again. Landry Jones in against the Jayhawks. But it was Todd Reesing who was rocked and chalked. Dominic Franks read that when he jumped it for a pick six. Boy, I tell you, you talk about playing the quarterback side. That was too easy. Reesing, three interceptions in the first half. He'd only thrown four all season. Career worst day in terms of interceptions for Reesing. It's 14-6. Landry Jones threw for 252 yards, finds Adrian Tunnell. The nine-yard touchdown, then Jones to Chris Brown made it. He does a nice job of spreading the wall, dumping it off to his back. Chris Brown, he takes it into the score. Boomer, 35-13. Jayhawks have now lost two in a row. Elsewhere in the Big 12, Oklahoma State readies for its showdown in Stillwater with Texas next week by thumping Baylor. And boy, I tell you what, I don't know if you can have an uglier loss than Nebraska did. Eight turnovers against Iowa State. Four of them blew inside the five-yard line. There aren't enough sleeping pills to get Coach Pelini to bed tonight. When that happens, do you? Power in the Big East against South Florida, who just as the leaves change late every fall, South Florida falls off the face of the earth. <laughs> Bill Stull to Jonathan Baldwin, 40 yards. Stull's been brilliant, Mark. He's been outstanding the entire season, throwing the ball exactly where he has to, but it helps when you've got a terrific freshman running back in Deion Lewis. Coach, look at the moves he makes, taking it over to the sideline. First back to go over 1,000 yards this year, just a tremendous effort by that young man. Pitt is a solid team. Good offensive line, good running back, good pass, and good defense. And other backs join Lewis later on the 1,000-yard parade, but the freshman, the first one there, Panthers roll 41-14. UCLA and Arizona, I think it's fair to say the Wildcats are the wild card in the Pac-10. 
Nick Foles, great protection. Uh, he gave it up, threw it to the wrong team a few times. He finds Jerron Kreiner. Oh, and Courtney Viney just got schooled. A terrific oh. move here. But ever since Nick Foles has taken over the offense for Arizona, they found ways to score points and lots of points. He made mistakes in this game, but oh. they still came through with points offensively. You know, Ayers couldn't believe he dropped it. No whistle was blown. It was ruled a backward pass. So Tony Dye would pick it up and go score a touchdown. Arizona had five turnovers on the day. They were able to overcome it. Nick Booth, I tell you what, UCLA just can't, they can't score. Uh, Carolina, head ball coach. Uh, this team always seems to find a way to play it close. Steven Garcia going up top to D.L. Moore. D.L. juggled it for a long time. They gave him six, Mayday. Terrific job. I don't know why they gave him the touchdown here. I disagree. The SEC officials, another bad call, but still he had the foresight to catch the ball. Rough couple of weeks. The SEC guys are saying, can't you just make it easy for us? No. Maybe it was all just a push because that let South Carolina kick off to Vanderbilt, and then Warren Norman takes it back the other way, bring the score even. So maybe no harm, no foul, just to serve tied at seven. No. Well, that's just because you're a contrarian. 10 <laughs> 7, Vanderbilt had the lead. Garcia, Alshon Jeffrey. Oh, this is just a great throw there. The speed of the young man just. Scores a winning touchdown. South Carolina. You got Tennessee coming up.